The setting we have for Esther chapter 4 is that one man, Mordecai, had refused to bow to the king's senior counsellor, Haman. Although the king had ruled that people should pay homage to Haman, Mordecai was a Jew, and as a Jew would not bow down to a man. But he spent his time in the gate to the king's court, where Haman frequently passed by. When Haman was made aware of this, he determined to destroy not just Mordecai, but all the Jews throughout the kingdom. And he was in an ideal place to do that. On the twelfth day of the month Nisan, the first month of the year, he cast lots. And the lot was no, 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 until the twelfth month when it was yes. So the date was set for eleven months' time. The next day, the 13th, he put the proposal to King Ahasuerus that there are some people throughout our kingdom which are different. They have different laws and they don't keep your laws. And so they are a destabilising influence and we should get rid of them. And I'll help pay for it. Ahasuerus, without investigating the matter and finding out exactly what was wrong with these people, he trusted Haman and authorised him to write a decree. And the decree was that on the 13th day of the 12th month, 11 months' time, everyone could go and attack a Jewish home or family. They were to destroy all the Jews. And as an incentive for them to do this, they were authorised to take their possessions. So the decree was distributed as law of the Medes and Persians a law that cannot be changed. The king and Haman sat down, happy with themselves, and the city and the kingdom was perplexed. When Mordecai learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping and wailing, and they lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her, and the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and take his sackcloth away from him but he would not accept them. Then Esther called Hatak, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he had appointed to attend her, and she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. So Hatak went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in front of the king's gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Shushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go in to the king to make supplication to him and plead before him for her people. So Hatak returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hatak and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court of the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. I myself have not been called to go in to the king these thirty days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. 
Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Esther chapter 4 and see how people respond to this news that they are to be attacked and destroyed. First of all, think of the burden on Mordecai. He knows it is because he refused to bow that all his people are threatened with destruction. But but he refused to bow because he bows only to God, who has a covenant with these people. Therefore, the Lord must have a way to rescue the people, and he must find it. There's no legal challenge that they can mount against this law, because the law of the Medes and Persians cannot be changed. And the only way to get access to the king is through the king's front man, Haman. And Haman is behind this law. So he's not going to listen to any reasonable requests for the law to be changed or modified. And so the Jews everywhere are distraught and were loud in their distress, crying out. And Mordecai puts on sackcloth, clothes of mourning, and goes around the city, mourning the destruction of the Jewish people, with a loud and bitter cry. Esther becomes aware that he's wearing sackcloth, and she's horrified. She sends some clothes out, but Mordecai refuses to accept them, and so she sends Hatak out to find out what's going on. Mordecai sends back a copy of the letter and an explanation as to what's happening and a plea for Esther to do something. For Esther is the only channel to the king that has any chance of bypassing Haman. But Esther is not regularly in the king's presence. He doesn't ask her about matters of state and it's 30 days since she has seen the king. But Mordecai points out that this law will even find you out, even though you are the queen. There will be no exception. This is the way law works. This is the strength of the Persian Empire. Its law cannot be overridden. And so Esther agrees to speak to the king. But she asks that the Jews fast, neither eat nor drink for three days, day or night, and she would fast likewise. It's fascinating, it doesn't say fast and pray, it just says fast. The book of Esther is devoid of references to God and to prayer, as if the children of Israel were alone, and yet they are not alone, for I'm sure they were praying to God and seeking God's mercy. But Esther takes up the challenge I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. She knows she would perish anyway, even if she doesn't go to the king. But there is strength for her, knowing that all the Jews in the capital are behind her. They are fasting with her, and they are praying that she will have wisdom in the manner in which she speaks to the king. But how do you raise such a matter to the king? You're there not to discuss matters of state. You're the king's wife and queen. You're there for his pleasure. You're as much a subject to the king as anyone else. Nevertheless, she undertakes to try. Anyone who enters into a covenant with God will be called upon to prove themselves under that covenant. That is, to trust in God at the risk of your life. Deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me, Jesus said.